The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. I know we got your phone calls up there. We're going to get to you uh, and get into the whole Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman uh, fiasco that the, the, the media and the Justice Department are trying to stir up on record. But we'll do that in the second half of this hour. He's also going to be interviewed for Obama Deception, too, and hopefully for the nightly news, if he's got time uh, to do uh, all of that after the main radio show. Lieutenant Mike Zulo is a former law enforcement uh, office criminal investigator for New Jersey, trained in fingerprint identification, narcotics investigations, homicide, domestic violence, etc. He joined Sheriff Joe Arpaio's Maricopa County Sheriff's Cold Case Posse in 2005, when he moved to Arizona, Lieutenant uh, Zulo has been commander of the cold case posse for the past seven years and is Sheriff Arpaio's lead investigator to reveal any and all evidence to determine if President Obama's identification document is valid. It was their goal to clear the document as authentic and move the country forward. And I've talked to people that were there, like Sheriff Mack, who was being asked first to do this. And uh, it was just so many constituents. He said, okay, I'll do it. Guys, I'm sure this isn't true because I don't know people that were there at the meeting. And then they're like, no, it's fake. And it's like, oh, no. And that's why the Justice Department's come after them now. You've seen all this. And again, we don't even know from my research who Obama is. Three aliases, proven, record sealed, hanging out with a communist pornographer that looks just like him that his grandfather would bring him to. Uh, in the summers, I mean, just it, it, his wife saying in all these speeches, he's from Kenya, born there in the Harvard Review as the head lawyer. Uh, I mean, as the head of the Harvard Review saying that he was from Kenya, uh, his book deal proposal saying he was from Kenya and then saying, you're crazy if you say that. I believe more and more now that it is Dreams of My Real Father, the film that shows who his real dad was, that that was another cover. So, so from my view, we don't know. Who he is, we know he's lying. We know there's a cover-up. And, you know, you're a detective with a distinguished background. You've been burrowed into this now for several years. Uh, you were already there on the cold case, you know, dealing with serious crimes, uh, Mike. So you didn't even ask for this. It was thrown in your lap uh, by Sheriff Arpaio. So break down the saga, what it's been like, what's going on, the certified uh, people that you've had, some of the top forensic experts in the country, the criminal case that's coming up, the Supreme Court of Alabama. From, from as best you know, what's going on here and what should the viewers know out there, the listeners know, because you know what MSNBC is going to do. They'll probably play a clip of this and go, they're crazy uh, and, you know, they're saying our dear leader is a fraud, but, but that's all they say. They say we're crazy. What's really going on? Well, Sheriff Arpaio did take this on, and we really went in there with the intention that this thing isn't going to be anything. Let's go in, let's clear the document, move the country forward. That was what the sheriff wanted. And it was like 24 hours later, I had to call the sheriff and say, we're going to have a problem here. We're 21 months into this now, and I can tell you this. We believe 100% that the document is a created 100% fabricated birth certificate. It is not real. As a matter of fact, to use the word document is erroneous. It is a PDF file. It never started its life as a paper document. It was built inside a computer. Other documents were scanned in, and pieces of those documents were then utilized to create this fabrication. It's the only birth certificate I'm aware of that has nine links and nine layers. The only document that I'm aware of that the registrar's stamp that gives its official authenticity has been imported into that document. It comes in uh, vertical. It's rotated 90 degrees horizontal and placed on the document. And you can move it all over the place. That document is a forgery. And if that document is a forgery, what was offered to the American people is absolutely nothing, Alex. What it really says is there is no proof on that birth narrative. There's no proof that Obama Sr. is the father, and there's no proof that Stanley Ann Dunham is the mother. There's no other information to back up those claims. And it goes on and on. As you know, the State Department had the, the fake dad, who looks nothing like Obama, thrown out saying it's a sham marriage, he's not the dad. I mean, that's mainstream news. It just goes on. I remember four years ago, they're going, he wasn't named Barry Sotero. That's a conspiracy. Now it's like, oh, yeah, my name was Barry Sotero. Oh, yeah, I went to this mosque. Oh, my name was, he's got all these weird names. Bottom line, I know you're a you know uh, detective, you deal with facts, but why is it so fake? What do you think's going on? Is it meant to be a diversion? What is it? You know, I don't really think it's meant to be a diversion, and I've heard that, that argument. What I think happened here, I think somebody either made a mistake or in haste, they put out the wrong file. 
And when it hit the internet through the White House servers, it was about 20 minutes, 130,000 some odd people had downloaded it. They didn't flatten it. They didn't flatten it. They didn't flatten it. It was done in error. Now they have to live with this. And if you notice the way they've been handling this is they don't say anything about it. They let the little minions do it. I think there's something very nefarious going on here. Um, and I think I think part of the reason why you see no action on it, which is, you know, you've been saying for a long time, I think NSA is the reason why you see no action on this. I think they've got dirt on people that they shouldn't have any. Well, that's not coming out, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you can control a lot of people with that kind of stuff. This needs to go to Congress. That's what Sheriff Arpaio has been asking for, and I'm in the process of trying to get it there. And in your great state of Texas, we have Texas Congressman uh, Steve Stockman, who's expressed a lot of interest in this. And I believe, Steve, once I sit down and really dissect this topic with you, I, I think he's going to take some action. Man, it, he's a great guy. I love Steve. Uh, it's so weird that it's like Texas that's resisting everything. And then now the Democrats are in the news saying, uh, we're going to take over Texas. Here's the headline uh, where they say that, uh, you know, we're going to turn it into a blue state. And I'm not even a big Republican. I'm, I'm more of a libertarian, but... Uh, it's it's really creepy to to see how they're intimidating the press, they're intimidating the media, they're trying to intimidate our pio. Yes, and, and even even liberals I know go, oh yeah, you know, Obama kind of is a thug, and look at his attorney general and all the. And now they're talking about arresting Rupert Murdoch, and I'm I, I mean, if they start arresting the heads of even mildly conservative media. How, this is like turning into Nazi Germany or Soviet Russia or something. I mean, it's reaching the threshold of ultra over-the-top creepy. Well, then I'll tell you that Rupert Murdoch, um, and I know you know Jerry Corsi very well. When I was working closely with Jerry on this in the beginning, Jerry received information of what was going to happen to Rupert Murdoch, and I am watching it unfold. So this stuff is in a mix. These guys are planning things out. They are taking actions that have been designed months, years ago. Yeah, They're yeah. putting into play. Exactly. I mean, I literally have no dirt on me. I don't even speed anymore. And we've got bureaucrats and harassment I don't get into on air coming out of the woodwork all of a sudden. It's exactly what the head of WorldNet Daily said, Joseph Farrell, last year. Because we, I never got persecuted like this by Bush, and I was critical of him. I mean, people do not understand this is a criminal operation. And I don't know, you don't want to prejudice yourself probably agreeing with that. It's just that I'm getting to the point where, I, well, getting back to the birth certificate, going over it, going over this criminal complaint, um, what's the greatest hits of this document that people should know about and, and, and where this is going? Well, you have a document that's comprised of nine layers, and what it was really designed to do, the intent of it is to deceive. The intent of this document was to fool the unsuspecting public, to give you a document, and I do believe it was a precursor to Jerry Corsi's book, Where's the Birth Certificate? I believe they were concerned that book was going to come out, and they launched this document. But what this really says is we don't really care what we show you. We're just going to show you something, and we're going to expect you to believe it. And if you look into his narrative, that's everything you've been fed. You see photographs, you're told these are the players. You see a photograph, you're told this is where I was or this is who I was sitting with, and you're supposed, you're you know, expected to believe this. But when you start looking into some of those photographs, those photographs themselves have been digitally altered. So everything about this is a facade. When you try to work the background of this individual, the trail goes cold. You can't find certain information. Certain information has either been now scrubbed or it's been locked away where you can't get to it. The fate of this birth certificate coming out the way it did, if they had flattened this document, probably the only argument would have been the fonts and it would have gone nowhere because every document examiner tells you, we can't tell you that unless we see an original. Our document examiner, who happens to be a court certified 20 years in business, actually worked for Perkins Coy as a certified document examiner. This is the law firm that represents Obama on every one of these issues. Wow. Going to be difficult for them to overcome that. And when he tells you it is a 100% fabrication, you can take that to the bank. It's a 100% fabrication. So the implications to this are huge. And, and the reason why I don't really think that this was some kind of joke is the penalties for this under U.S. code, under U.S. statute, they're up to 20 years in prison. The manufacture, the uh, display, the passing on of this kind of document, you're looking at some serious jail time. Now, you go back into the way this document was released, and they set up Mr. Obama with plausible deniability. They and it was work. done clearly in response to Jerry Corsi's uh, book coming out the next week. I mean, I, I do believe that. I, well, it was so obvious, and, and the media was all poised to attack and slander and say the book had been recalled when it wasn't. You could see a clear psyops. 
you don't do that against something that that is a fraud. Right. You, you only act like that when you're scared to death. Exactly. And I really do believe it was a preemptive strike trying to neutralize that book. And as as Jerry could attest to, because we received the same information, it was not 24 hours after the release of this birth certificate. Mainstream media, Fox News, nobody would talk about this issue anymore. And I have individuals, and I cannot divulge who they are for fear of their sure. losing their occupation, in that in that genre that told me straight out, we were threatened. If we talk about this any longer, we're going to be fired. Oh, I talk to press all the time. They get threatened. They're told point blank. You don't even criticize Obama. So you don't have a free press anymore. When you don't have a free press, how do you vet a president? This man has never been vetted. This man has never gone through the ringer of being vetted. You know, and, and with Sheriff Arpaio, it's kind of like a joke in his office. I say, you know, Sheriff, he can't pass the, uh, the background check to be the janitor in your jail. Well, that's what I want to talk about when we come back. I've read a lot of history, and I've read a lot of Cold War stuff, and the only time I've seen backgrounds with people, to use a, a fiction account, it's like No Way Out with Kevin Costner, the only time you've got backgrounds this shaded and different things is when it is a sleeper cell uh, foreign infiltrator. Now, now he could be a corporate infiltrator, whatever he is, but he, I've never seen somebody that has a Manchurian candidate cut out. And you only see this with somebody that is an operative of something, and, and, and so I've it's really scary because I didn't really get into the birth certificate thing and cover it until I saw that fake. And then I said, oh, my gosh, this is all real. Mike Zulo is our guest. Stay with us. Hello. This the only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.